Yes, Survivor Know-It-Alls here live on the West Coast. Stephen Fishback, it is a uh, West Coast party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, are, uh, we are doing this. Uh, it is 9.20 on uh, Pacific time. We're doing this on, uh, after the West Coast. We're giving some love out there to the uh, other half of the country this week. Just a one-time thing. We're trying to uh, spread the know-it-all's love. And, Stephen, how are you doing on this very late night for you on the East Coast? I'm great, Rob. You know, I took advantage of the of the night off. I went out and had a night on the town. I I saw a, a science uh, show with Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, with uh, Buzz Aldrin. It was it's been a really great evening for me. And so now I'm I'm, I'm enthused to, to talk about Survivor with uh, some of the concepts of space in mind. See, you confused me with your tweets earlier tonight because I thought you actually were with Tyson Apostle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an equally profound thinker. Neil deGrasse, Tyson, yeah. and some of <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was a, it was a great presentation uh, of you know some some really funny people and uh, Buzz Aldrin, man, Buzz Aldrin talking about space, you know, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, who was the astronaut from Survivor Guatemala? Was he there? Oh no, Dan uh, Dan Barry, right? Yeah, no, he uh, not Guatemala from um, another one. Exile Island. Exile Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, he was not there. But anyway, I'm, I'm the big episode, right? We haven't had a dud yet. No bad episode so far, Rob. What did you think? So far, so good. I thought it was a really great episode. I got some really uh, fun stuff going on with the fans uh, this week. Fans Tribe might be more interesting than the Favorites Tribe. I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, you know, the Favorites, they haven't shown us a lot of the dynamics, right? We don't know what Brent is doing. We don't know, like, uh, but yeah, I agree. I think there's more, like, and more explosive personalities on the Fans Tribe, which is, like, kind of incredible. Like, given who the favorites are this season, how are there, like, bigger eruptions uh, happening over on the fans' tribe? So, like, well done, Lynn Spillman and CBS Casting. All right, so we are going to talk about it all here tonight, talk about everything going on, talk about uh, Sherry, Shamar, talk about what's going on with these with these girls, uh, Laura and Julia, and then, of course, uh, we'll talk about what is going on over at the favorites' camp, and we are doing it all here live. If you want to get your comments onto the show for Stephen and I to answer, you could either tweet us at hashtag RHAP on Twitter or Jessica Frey is monitoring the chat room closely, looking for your comments, and we'll take them uh, later on in this program. But, Stephen, I want to talk about uh, this whole Shamar and Sherry and everything going on at the Fans Tribe because I know everybody is very high on Sherry and her game right now, but I feel like I have a little bit of a uh, contrarian opinion on this. All right, well, I'd love to hear it. You know, I mean, I've been a big fan of Sherry. I gave her the fishy last week. Uh, she's due for a shared fishy this week, which we'll, we can get into a little bit later. But I do have, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm a little ambivalent too, and I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, well, I don't know, Stephen, because, you know, I did the Survivor fans versus favorites uh, show this week. I tried to get in contact with a few of the original fans versus favorites and talk to them about what went on during their season. And I did a show this week, and I talked with uh, Joel Anderson and Kathy Sleckman from Survivor Fans vs. Favorites. And I watched a lot of that season to sort of get ready for uh, to talk about that podcast. And I came away with the, thing, with the thinking of that the fans really came apart at the seams, and they, start, they started to attack each other. And yeah. they needed to keep a mentality of, hey – we're the fans. It's us against the favorites. We need to stay strong, and we need to uh, take this thing to the end and make sure it's all fans. We have to be, have solidarity. And I think this whole idea that Sherry is doing of, hey, we got to keep Shamar around. Shamar is my Philip. I think that goes against that thinking of fans first. I think Sherry is thinking, how am I going to win the game, and, and how am I going to get votes in the end of the game? with Shamar, and I don't think that you're going to be able to sustain this nonsense for another 32 days. I mean, I think she probably didn't count on how explosive Shamar really was, right? I think she keeps hoping that Shamar will settle down or that she can tame Shamar. You know, she calls him her Philip, and if you look at Philip, like, Philip was very loyal to, you know, Boston Rob. Philip was really irritating. He picked fights, but he wasn't as explosive. He didn't, you know, he wasn't, like, so... Just, just completely divisive in the way that that Shamar is, uh, and I feel like Shamar actually might be one of the most, if not the most hot-headed person that the show has ever seen. He certainly has to be up there, um, you know, and maybe one of the most explosive. And you know, I, I know that 
I would like to disagree with you, but I, I kind of agree. I think in a fans versus favorite season, you have to assume there's going to be a tribe swap, right? Like so that's the whole premise. And for the fans to go into that swap not being cohesive, it could be disastrous for them. And uh, someone like Shamar um, just could could end, you know, by driving this really big wedge between Reynolds and Eddie and the rest of the tribe, you know, they're risking a really divisive uh, merge. And if we're trying to recreate the magic of Philip in Boston, Rob, and if we take Philip at his word 100% here, I mean, yeah. what, if. what he says, and again, you know, who knows 100% for sure, but let's say, let's hypothetically, let's take Philip at his word, where in Survivor Redemption Island, Philip was playing a character and he was doing things to irritate the tribe intentionally and he was playing this up. And he, knowing that he had a deal with Boston Rob, and Boston Rob was wanting Philip to do this, so right. Philip was antagonizing, and Boston Rob liked the fact that. So it was a, sort of a symbiotic relationship between Philip and Boston Rob in that season. I don't think that Sherry is. It is not to her benefit here the extent to which Shamar is antagonizing the other people and. Shamar is not doing it intentionally as strategy, as Philip at least said he was doing in Survivor Redemption Island. I mean, I think like it's it's like a pretty big stretch to say that Philip was doing it as strategy, right? Like, let's. I mean, for me, the premise is that that was an after the fact justification that maybe someone handed him on the island. Um, but either way, I, I, I agree that like Philip was not as extreme as Shamar. I mean, I think Philip was like irritating to the people around him. Rob found that useful. But, you know, Philip had this incredible loyalty to Rob in a way that I'm not sure Shamar does to Sherry. You know, Shamar, I mean, like, even the fact that Shamar was talking about quitting, you know, Philip would have never done something like that. Um, so, you know, and I think, like, Philip's annoying, but Shamar is, like, you know, Shamar is yelling at people. He's getting into these crazy fights. And I guess Philip got into that one with Steve over the rice and the racism. But, uh, you know, not this is, this is, he is really extreme, and it does seem like, uh, he's he's you know not just driving a web uh, wedge in the tribe, but also I mean morale is a thing on Survivor. You know cohesion is a thing, um, and it sometimes does trump physical strength. I mean, and are Reynolds and Eddie really such bad guys? I mean, would Sherry be? Would it be the end of her game to sort of give up on this Shamar experiment and try to get something going with at least one of these two guys? And at this point in the game, too, you know, she's got the numbers, I think, Sherry. And, like, you know, you're right. She's playing for the end. She's thinking, who am I going to sit next to? And that's important, you know. But you all, you have to get to the end to be able to win the end. Yeah, I think so. I mean, going back to the original fans versus favorites, I mean, in hindsight, it really does seem like if Joel and Mikey B could have gotten on the same page in the original Survivor fans versus favorites, they would have been better served at the time that it was time to take on the favorites. Now, at some point, it does feel like we're watching two separate shows right now, a show that's like the love boat of our returning favorites who are off on some <laughs> other island. <laughs> I jinx. Yeah. There's another island where people are actually fighting and playing a game of Survivor, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does seem like, like the favorites are all like, uh, you know, best of. It's like greatest hits and like, you know, Cochran and Philip have their... Uh, Face off for airtime, and Cochran sees that the cameras are trained on Phillips, so he tries to get in the scene as well. And then over here, you're right; it's like a game to the death. And you know, Eddie seems like a really sweet guy. Um, it's hard because, like, at the end of the day, one person wins, and then for every other person, there's a story of well, if they'd done this thing or that thing or this thing, they they would have won. You know, and you don't know when you're in the moment; you don't know what the thing is. Yeah, Stephen, I'd like to go to the board if if we can tonight. I love the board. Yeah, let's do it. Up here, just uh, give me give me a couple seconds here of a uh, of filler while I move over. All right. Um, well, we got Rob moving over to the board here, We're picking up a microphone. Very exciting. Um, hey, I can't. I'm not. I'm not the host. You are, Rob. Yeah. How, how was yeah. it at Space Camp, Stephen? Yeah, let me tell you about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He, they're big fans of uh, setting up a colony on Mars. That's what we were talking about today. Setting up a colony on Mars. Um, yeah, exactly. All right, so here we go. You've got the board. And you can hear me okay over here? Yeah. All right. So, Stephen, I guess we'll, my, my big question is here. You know, at some point I'm assuming we're going to have a tribe swap if we're going to follow the fans versus favorites format. And I'm going to uh, bring this up over here. Yeah, you're a little bit low. 
Yeah. So uh, let me just uh, make this a little uh, little louder for you guys. Yeah. So like, I mean, we in fans versus favorites, the first one, um, we had a swap, right? In heroes versus villains, though, they didn't have a swap, which I was like shocked about. It seemed to me like that premise, similarly to a fans versus favorites premise, would necessitate a swap. Um, but like, maybe not so much as fans versus favorites. The thing is, you ultimately don't know, right? Production could do anything they want. You might swap, you might not, but you have to prepare for the possibility of a swap. So here's the board. Yeah, so let's take a look, take a look at the board here. And so what I ha what, what I'm wondering here is where is what are we thinking here for Sherry? And let me uh, just my mouse over here so uh, bring bring this up on the full screen. So here we go. Here's Sherry, and now uh, so we have these three guys, the three people that are left from the cool kids, uh, Reynolds and Hope and Eddie. And then we have uh, these six over here right. who are with Sherry. So now, if we take Hope off the board, okay, yeah. we had a a, a three 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 tie, which I believe was the first time in Survivor history that we've had that, and a successful idol flush, uh, which is also a rarity. Wait, um, no, he, he didn't play the idol, did he? I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. That uh, you're right, you're right. So what what should have been a successful idol flush, except Reynolds didn't. Everything went to plan. Except for Reynolds didn't play the idol again. Yeah. So we have a very complicated situation heading into next week if there is no tribe swap. And I'm hoping for no tribe swap because I want to see how this plays out. So the question is, is going to be now if these two guys are still are still over here and they have and they still have an idol next week, Steven, right. how do you play that if you're this group of six? The other thing is like they need Reynolds and Eddie. You know, this tribe is we I mean, I think at this point you say, we got to get rid of Shamar, right? And I think, like, that might be enough. It might even be enough now. You know, Reynolds at the start of this episode was like, it's game on, and we have no loyalty to each other, and I happen to be playing with you, and screw y'all. But maybe just the fact of voting out Shamar would be enough to heal those wounds. It could be. Now, is it as simple? And let's say, hypothetically, the fans go to Tribal Council again next week. Okay? Is it, is, are we willing to do this? Now we're going to split the votes again next week? And how many times could you split split the votes? Isn't this like on uh, blackjack? You how many times could you split? Uh, how many times could you split? <laughs> well, that's why I think now is the time to find some tribe healing. You know, like Shamar is like Sherry's got to cut him loose, and these other people too—they're all sick of him. You know, Matt never Matt wanted him out last week. Uh, you know, Alette, you know uh, Laura and whatever the other one's name is uh, wanted him out this week. You know, and and. Um, who knows what Michael's thinking? He probably wants him out too. You know, he like refused to shake Michael's hand. I, I think that the tide is going to turn against Shamar next week um, if they're smart at all. I don't think Sherry. You know, Sherry is good at wrangling Shamar, but at some point, you know, you've got to cut your losses. You got to play situationally and, and start. You know, leave behind your game plan. Yeah, because I do think it's almost suicide here in the game for to go into next week, go to another tribal council. Now we're going to vote off one of these two. Uh, our stars here in the challenges. Yeah. They've beaten the favorites now at, uh, or I'm sorry, that the favorites have beat them uh, so far two out of three times in the immunity challenges. You can't lose these guys. Jerry can't move forward with, uh, with this team of people <laughs> and, and lose, and lose Eddie here who isn't bringing much to the show, but is bringing a lot here uh, as far as being a challenge competitor. He seems like a really nice guy though. You said that twice now. You seem to be... He just seems so affable. Even Shamar likes him. Even Shamar's like, you know what? You're not so bad. If Shamar likes you, like you're doing so, you know, you must be really, really nice. Yeah, I thought Jeff was really over the top in his praise of Eddie as well tonight. In Tribal Council, he's like, he's like, Eddie, how about you? You're you're affable. You're good looking. You're intelligent. You're funny. You're smart. You you know. I was like, oh, Jeff really laid it on thick for Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> you're single. Um, yeah. So... We have a so with this group going forward. I mean, so you think that uh, Sherry will cut the cord on Shamar next week uh, if if she has to, and then move forward with this seven as opposed to uh, getting rid of one of these two guys. Let me say, I hope she'll do that. You know, you don't. I mean, on the other hand, like next week, episode four, right? Typically, the swap is in episode five or so. Um, I hope that Sherry would be smart enough to do to cut the cord. Um, but that said, with a swap upcoming, and you've already alienated Reynolds and Eddie, maybe the move is to get rid of Reynolds or Eddie. Um, you know, maybe the move is to uh, get rid of one of the guys who's not going to be loyal to your side of the of the fans' tribe, and to um, 
you know, keep the one who is going to be loyal. You know, it's it's a hard and it's a hard call. I mean, you know, I think it's again like you've got to see how the rest of your group is feeling. But you know, maybe next week it's time to cut a disloyal uh, member loose. Okay. Well, how about this, Stephen? I wanted to talk a little bit about what uh, Laura and Julia were up to this week and what their thinking was as far as what they did here tonight. Now, I thought this was sort of an opportunity for them to move out on their own, and I thought going into Tribal Council that we were going to see Laura make a move here, and so let's put Hope back up on the board here because uh, that's what we were thinking. And we it looked like I put these two in the middle here because it looked like we were going to see a new alliance form, the three cool kids who were left, plus Laura, plus Julia, to take out Shamar here and really be a power play against Sherry here in the early goings for the fans. Now, I actually think, I'm going to present a sort of counterintuitive interpretation of events that I think is slightly different than the story we saw on screen, but that I think it might actually have been happening. And I kind of think Laura did something really remarkable, but was sort of the opposite of what we saw. So, first of all, I think we can, I mean, agree that it, you know, so that it, for Laura and Julia to flip, you know, they're flipping over from the middle of one alliance to the bottom of another not necessarily the best move. You know, maybe with the Shamar thing, we can talk about that, but I actually, we never actually see Laura and Julia discuss voting out Shamar. They say, are you worried about Shamar? And then, and then Laura says, yes, I'm scared. But the two of them never talk about voting, them, voting him out. Then we see Laura talking to Reynolds, I can get rid of Shamar. And here's what I think was actually going on. I think Laura was creating a diver. Uh, you know, I, you know that I hate fan fiction, Rob. You know that I hate like purely speculative things. But I, I actually think that there might there's grounds for this interpretation. Um, Laura is creating a fake plan with Reynold be for a couple of reasons. First, by getting all three of the cool kids to vote for Shamar, she keeps she makes sure that Hope doesn't flip her vote to Eddie, because if Hope flipped her vote, they would lose Eddie, who they need. Second of all, by making sure that all three of the cool kids vote for Shamar, she keeps herself off the off the roster. And then third, she just you know confuses them and kind of keeps them in her plan rather than coming up with a counter plan. So I think it might have just been pure diversion. Uh, that is a very interesting theory. Now I don't know, that, Stephen. That, that may be your own fan fiction. That might no, but there's no there's no reason to think we don't. We have no confessionals with either Laura or Julia where they talk about voting out Shamar. We don't have them talking amongst themselves with voting out Shamar. The only time you see them talking about voting out Shamar is with Reynolds. I had a different theory on what happened here tonight. Um, we had Laura. It seemed like she was turning into a bit of a nervous Nelly. And she's starting to get a little scared about what was going on. And she says to Reynolds, hey, look, I can, I can get Laura. Uh, I'm sorry, that, uh, she, I can get Julia. Hey, I think I, your mic is uh, low. Okay, let me see. Let me see what I can. Uh, it's, it's, let me see. How's, is, this, is this better for you guys? Is this, is this getting better for you guys? Better? Anything? Bueller? <laughs> Maybe better. Anyone? Um, Might get better? I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not refreshed in chat. Okay. Um, well, hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, so well, let me let me keep let me keep going here. Yeah. So, so she says to Reynolds, "Hey, I can deliver. I can deliver the uh, Julia vote to you." Right. Now, did she go back to Julia and say, "Hey, guess what? We're gonna take out Shamar." And either Sherry said uh, no, or or Julia said no. I don't want to do that. Um, better, but still low, Rob. Okay. Well, all right. Let's yeah. Um, I, I, so, you know, again, like, I, I mean, I agree that that's the interpretation that the show wanted us to, to believe. Um, you know, I agree that that's how, like, the, the narrative was presented. And, you know, ultimately, you're sort of at the mercy of the narrative. Um, you know, so either Sherry talked them out of it or, or someone said no. I mean, you know, a lot of the time you think of plans at the last minute um, and then you consider their merits, and then you decide against them, or you decide for them. I just think the fact that she went to Reynolds without it being confirmed with Julia, I don't think it's likely that it was a real plan. I don't think you would go outside your alliance and make the deal before you knew, you know, before it was a done deal, unless it was a diversion. Very interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here uh, with, a tri with a tribe swap to see how that is going to shake things up, or if you have to play this game and expect it to 
not going to be a tribe swap because. Well, what would you do? Would you in, in this? Well, Rob, in this situation, you are on the island. It's day nine. Day nine, right? Yeah. Do you think? Are you thinking about the swap? Are you like? How are you playing in this situation? I think maybe the young, the younger me might have played it the way that Sher that Sherry is thinking of. But I think the more I've gone back and looked at this, I think the history of Survivor favors the tribe that's, that works together and, and, and is more cohesive going into the merge. Because let's say, I mean, I Definitely. mean don't you think that if there's a tribe swap at, at some point, I mean, isn't Reynolds automatically defecting to the yeah. tribe immediately and saying, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so happy to be away from, uh, from the fans. I'll help you guys. You want to vote out Sherry? You want to vote out Julia? You want to vote out Mike, Matt, whoever? I don't care. They're trying, trying to get me this whole game. So if you're going to leave Reynolds around and then there is going to be a tribe swap, he will flip and he will defect and then you're going to be in big trouble. I totally agree. And it's not just, you know, I think it's throughout the post-merge time. You know, it's not just like one, one, um, one guy being disloyal. You know, it's like when in the, in the post-merge time when you have disloyalty and distrust um, among your among your alliance members, like those are the groups that splinter, and it's you know you've seen it in Timbira, you saw it in Galu, you saw it in the Heroes, you saw it in Tandang last season. Uh, yeah, last season, right? Like Tandang's whole problem was they had ostracized people, they had isolated people, and they had uh, you know allowed people to feel left out. And then when the merge came, those people flipped on the alliance and they completely undid it. And uh, you know I think you need that sense of um, cohesion in order to really. You know, but on the other hand, um, the important thing is that the group that exists is cohesive. So if they can get rid of Reynolds and Eddie and have a tight alliance amongst themselves, they might be doing all right anyway. You know, I, let's go back to Boston Rob one more time here. I mean, if you look at the season where he actually won, he went into the merge with a very tight group of six where it was Boston Rob and Natalie and Andrea and Ashley and Philip and Grant. And when Zapatera in that season tried to get Philip, who was the sixth man on the totem pole, to switch over, they couldn't do it. And then Boston Rob just pagonged that whole other group because they had a tight enough uh, core there. And so at this pace that we're going here, I don't think that the fans tribe is ever going to get there unless we take Shamar out of the equation. Because Wait, keep it. Oh, go ahead. Because as long as Shamar is in the picture, we are never going to have Eddie and Reynolds on board. And I think for Sherry's long-term game, she needs to get those guys back on board, team fan, and not freelancing and playing their own game. But only you know, but Boston Rob is the only guy who won from his alliance, right? So there were six other people or five other people in that alliance who should have been less cohesive, right? Like. You know who's who clearly weren't maximizing their game by uh, adhering to that strategy. Yeah. So it really needs to be for those for these people. It needs to be. Hey, it's fans first. No matter what, it's us against them. And Boston Rob did a great job in that season of instilling that. I think he also probably did a really good job on the All Star season of hey, it's us against them. Don't talk to any of those people from those alliance. They're the bad guys. They're the enemies. And right now, the way things are going for this fans tribe, I think there's going to be a lot of defection from these two guys if they're still in the game at this point and they're not going to be able to win any challenges if they do get rid of them and if they keep Shamar around going into them who knows what's going to happen the longer you keep Shamar in this game he's like uh, nitroglycerin so he could go off at any minute and take everybody down with him well Rob that's actually a good I think this is a good moment to transition over to the favorites try because I feel that you know, loyal inter-alliance loyalty is also the key issue uh, in the, for the favorites tribe this this episode, right? With uh, Andrea uh, potentially targeting Corinne, um, uh, the a member of her alliance, and wanting to replace her with Brandon. Now, what, what what did you think of that move? Well, my th question for you tonight, Stephen, was going to be just how badly is Corinne screwed right now? Because I'm the Corinne screw is screwed meter is uh, going pretty high in my book. Oh, re well, so let's talk. So we'll run through the reasons you think Corinne is screwed. Well, I think Corinne is screwed because Andrew <laughs> is plotting against her, and she's talking to Cochran and talking to Philip. And like, I love this idea. This is a great idea. Um, so I think that this is a uh, big trouble for Corinne. And, you know, this targeting people in your own alliance, I'm going to go back to Redemption Island. It seems to me that it feels like for Andrea, the shoe is on the other foot because this feels like, 
what Boston Rob did to Matt Elrod and Andrea back in that season where he had these people in his alliance and decided to target Matt Elrod in that alliance because he didn't trust Matt Elrod. And that feels to me like what Andrea is trying to do. Oh, these two are a pair in my alliance. I don't like that. I'm going to take out Corinne here. So you think this is a good move for Andrea? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I think it's a little too early to be fooling around with this sort of stuff. I mean, to take out somebody who's intensely loyal like Corinne and replace her in the six with right. enhance. I think this is a very questionable move to even be thinking this on day seven and day, day eight. And so help me God, if, <laughs> if Corinne goes out of the game here, I'm going to give Andrea the Eliza treatment, I think, on, uh, on Twitter. <laughs> You're going to have a, a Twitter a blow up? Okay, yeah, well, you know, I'm always on board with that. Um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so the other reason I think it's bad is like not just that Brandon is a you know, crazy erratic player, but also that Brandon is tight with Dawn and Cochrane. So you have this alliance of six now where you have, you know, if only the board were set up, we have these pairs, right? You have uh, Philip and Andrea, you have Dawn and Cochrane, and then you have Malcolm and Corinne who are these outliers, and they're kind of together because they're both outliers together and because they're both attractive. Um, so by bringing in Brandon instead of Corinne, Andrea is like shifting the dynamics in the alliance to the South Pacific crew. You know, Cochrane is tighter to Brandon, Cochrane is tighter to Don. Suddenly Cochrane basically controls, or Do Dochran controls the, the, all the votes of the alliance. It Whereas It was like she was off tonight. Yeah, you know, no, no, no weeping, no breaking down. They got no, they got no use for her. I didn't even see her. She was in the picture. Did you see Brenda? Because I also didn't see Brenda. Brenda was off in the distance when Philip was like, uh, like working out and and lifting things. It was like I I thought Philip was gonna say like, uh, you know, I'm out here with all these with all these uh, kids and this uh, Brenda is. Uh, I, I thought he was gonna say like he had a crush on Brenda. <laughs> he was like off looking in the distance. Like I'm 54 years old, but I'm not dead. Yeah, uh, I, I see this Brenda, uh, but she was the only other person in the shot. So uh, I, that's where I thought we were going with that. Um. Well, maybe Dawn was just like hanging out at the hotel, right? There's like a usually, I guess here they give them the hotel now that like if when they're tired and weren't worn out, they didn't hang out then. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Phil, Philip was funny. Philip was in fine form today, but but so Philip is like, you know, Philip is. Um, that's the other reason I think Andrew's in a good position is because Philip is such this like, you know, he's ostensibly the leader of the group, and. Uh, Andrea's his right hand lady, right? Like, and he's like a huge, like he he is Philip, you know. Like Sherry wants her Philip. Andrea has her Philip. It's Philip. Like, why go why go messing around with, you know, mixing up the alliance when she's got this perfect position? Well, that's great. I mean, why get a fake Philip when you can get the, the you've got the actual Philip? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is that is great. So yeah, I think it's too early here for Andrea, and I'm gonna say the same thing. For the favorites tribe that I would say for the fans tribe, it's like, why, why are you messing around with this? Yeah, you know, I agree. Why are we getting too cute here? I got to take out Corinne. I mean, is Corinne a threat? Is it like, a, oh, Corinne and Malcolm are tight. They could be the final two. So I don't want to lose the power. If Corinne and Malcolm are tight, yet they have really no other allies to speak of, if they are truly in your alliance and isolated, it's not like, oh, Corinne and Malcolm are tight and, and they have everybody else in their back pocket. They're not Rob and Amber where it's like, okay, yeah. they have all these other, all these other sub-alliances. It's just them. Who are they bothering? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that for, for her to, like, scapegoat Corinne a little bit is not bad, like, to point the finger with Cochrane or whatever. But then when she gets to the point where she's, like, bringing in Brandon and, like, considering, like, switch, switching people in and out, it's like, what are you doing, you know? And I do think, you know, it is a little bit like... Uh, we saw with Tandang last season where, like, they just got bored and they were, like, turning on each other because they were winning, you know? And, and um, you know, you've, you've got all, as an alliance, you have all these plans and you want to, like, play Survivor. And, I, you know, I've got this theory that the people from Redemption Island were, are really want to get out of from under Boston Rob's shadow. And, you know, I, I really think that's true with Philip. He wants to be the leader. And I think it's true with Andrea, too. She wants to, like, be a strategist, you know? She has this... Uh, regret from the first season where everyone called her a zombie. You know, she went out and played her ass off and, like, did great in all the challenges, but she'd never made any, like, big moves, and I think she probably regrets that. So she comes out here and is like, 
now I got to make a lot of big moves and like, but I don't have any opportunity to make big moves, you know, because like, you know, you make one or two big moves in a season and that's a lot. But like, you know, when you're sitting there for 24 hours a day, you're like, where's my big move? Yeah. Now, we also saw on Survivor Redemption Island, Andrea got a, a little, she didn't like it when Krista Klump gave the Bible to Matt Elrod. Uh, <laughs> I don't care for that. Do you think, could this be at all that it is Andrea who wants to be off in the jungle having one on <laughs> that's with Malcolm, like Corinne being the one. She, Andrea is sitting there having one-on-one -on -one chats with Cochran and Philip, and, <laughs> and she's saying to herself, hey, this could be, if this Corinne wasn't around, this yeah. could be off in the woods with Malcolm. That's interesting. That, that's actually really funny. I, I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, it could be right. You know, you want to get closer, you want to snuggle with someone, you got to get rid of the competition. Okay. So, all right. So let's t let's get into some of these questions from you guys here tonight. And uh, I'm gonna br I'm gonna bring in uh, Jessica Frey, and uh, she's got been following everything very closely, uh, and see uh, what she has uh, in store for us. And let's see. Hey. Oh my God. Hello. Hey. Some background noise. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good questions. Oh great. Yeah. Definitely right. Team Corinne. Okay, here's one about An Andrea and Corinne. All right, fire, fire yeah. I'm gonna, uh, my yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, this is from uh, Scotty Styles, who wants to know, should Andrea have told Brandon about their plans to vote out Corinne? Will it backfire on her? So, Stephen, uh, here's what we, we wanted to know about. Is it ever a good idea to tell Brandon Hans the plan? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. The answer to that is no. Like, what is the point? You know, what What exactly? It's like, I mean, Rob, like, why didn't they take a lesson from your book and act, treat him like you, ch treat him like you treated Matt, right? Like, you can have Brandon Hanson in your alliance, just, like, feed him information when you need to. I agree with you. Yeah, and Brandon Hanson, it was like they were telling him the plan, and he was, like, he was, like, having, like, a conniption of, like, a on my season, people, I found out that things weren't true, and if I find out that we're not really voting out, Corinne, I'll <laughs> give you the rice, I'll, I'll burn the shelter down. Like, calm down. They were telling you what was really going on. What do you think Cochran's strategy is? Because, you know, Cochran was humoring Andrea, right, um, when she first came to him with this idea to vote out Corinne, but, like, then he goes and invites Brandon into, the, into this meeting. Like, what do you think he's thinking in that situation? No. Are you assuming that he's thinking? <laughs> he's a smart guy, you know. He's like probably worried about the sun and something. He is, a, he is a smart guy, and and he's often. Yeah. I feel like Cochran is all, often commenting on what is going on. But I feel like through two seasons, through his body of work so far, I feel like we we rarely get from Cochran. Here's what my plan is. Here's right. where it's all going. And I feel like, uh, you know, he's often commenting on what is happening around us, what the other players are doing, what he's thinking. But I feel like we don't, we rarely get a big picture from Cochran on what his ultimate strategy is. So I think it's very hard to tell. Right. Okay. Uh, Rob, uh, Kpots27 wants to know, do you guys think Brenda is trying to get further this season by playing the Purple Kelly strategy? Hashtag no talking. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I don't think that Brenda is trying to play the Purple Kelly strategy. I don't think she's planning on quitting. I don't think anybody would say to themselves, boy, you know who did a really good job? <laughs> I think I'm going to try to bring that up. She's getting a Purple Kelly edit this season, yeah. which you know, that speaks well for Brenda. She also has a purple bikini on, so purple <laughs> Brenda certainly fits, but... Um, no, I don't think she's doing anything intentionally to be Purple Kelly. But she, I will say she, after a sort of a rough start, she is doing a good job blending into the scenery enough where they're not talking about, hey, she's the next target. So good for my pick. Uh, what was a Rob or no dolls? What was your opinion on not splitting the votes on Renal to flush out the idol? Hmm. Um, now, I thought they did split the votes. To they put it on Eddie, though. I think, the, I think uh, George J or uh, Jess Bug for George Jane means... Um, why not put them on Reynold to make him uh, play the idol? I'll tell you why. They can't risk losing Reynold. Reynold yeah. is so good in the challenges. 
that they can't risk losing him, and they don't even want to mess around that he might get voted by, even though he has an idol, they don't want to risk, okay, he gave the idol to Eddie to outsmart them, and then he ends up getting voted out and they lose all the challenges. So that's why they didn't want to mess around with Reynolds. And I actually think that Reynolds is not a half bad player. I kind of disagree. And like, well, this next question will get to the heart of that. Um, Nick Fishman wants to know, did Reynolds' rant remind you at all of Ozzy's free agent rant? You know, <laughs> I, a, not that much, I have to say. I don't think that Reynolds, uh, his, what he, when he was ranting, was, was awful. Because I, I felt like he was, uh, okay, yeah, the game is, the game is on or, or whatever. Yeah, that wasn't great, but I did feel like he was, you know, a, a little bit sort of saying like, hey, we got to stick together. And I kind of fundamentally agree with his point that Shamar is the person in the tribe who is squeaky wheel that is upsetting the apple cart. And I don't think this tribe can ever move on with Shamar still in the picture. So, But I think Reynolds is uh, – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was done. Um, I disagree with you about Reynolds being a good player. He's so indignant and so such a loud mouth, and he gets in so many fights with people. Like that's the hallmark of someone not being a good player. And I feel like you're you're being misled by his awesome hair and like chiseled, you know, chiseled good looks. And I, I was deceived by that too, Rob. I understand. It's a very easy mistake to make. Um, I feel like but, we don't know the book on Reynolds until we see him not with Shamar. Maybe, but like even with you know, even with I think Sherry, right? When they came back from the challenge, like he was, he was, she was the one that he was ranting to, and it's like, you've just lost a major vote. You know, maybe don't get up in your soapbox and start declaiming how the world owes you something, and now it's real. And like you know, a real Survivor player or a really good one would come back from a loss like that and like try to make inroads, try to build strategy. And we haven't seen, you know, he's like, instead he's off like smirking about like Revenge of the Nerds with Eddie, you know, like he hasn't like played a great game yet. I, I don't think that's, you know, I think there's hope for Reynolds, but we haven't seen it yet. No, there's no hope. Hope is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I will say, all I said is I think Reynolds is a not a bad, maybe he's not a half bad player. That's all I said. I didn't say he was great. You said he was the best player of all time and entirely because of a social strategy. And I disagree with that. All right, here's one from, uh, from our friend Ian Terry. He wants to know, do you think I have a chance with Laura, RAJP? Do you think Ian Terry has a chance with Laura? I'd have to say so, right? Well, what, what happened to RC? I thought that, like, they had a thing. Moved past it. Yeah, I don't know. Old news. She's on the last season. This is oh, news. God, yeah. Um, yeah, sure, why not? The current Big Brother winner is not going to be settling on somebody from last season, even if she is Miss Survivor. <laughs> The current oh, that's what something else I wanted to say, Rob. I feel like you know, Miss Survivor is in trouble uh, with with this season. Hope, hope, and early boot. You know, like you need the hot girls to do well. Well, I think that Allie, Allie gone last episode. Franny, I will say, yeah, Franny, Franny's gone. Oh, come on. I think it speaks to the uh, chances of a favorite being Miss Survivor. 2014, because if the fans are going to drop out early, they really have no chance. But we'll see what Survivor 27 brings. Yeah, well, I think that, uh, you know, this is just like what happened to Angie last season, you know? Angie, had, by every by all rights, should have been Miss Survivor. No offense to RC, who's doing a great job with the Sash, but, um, yeah. And Sash is doing a great job, too. Just got married. Congratulations, Sash. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Alex Photopolis wants to know, what was the relevance of Cochran talking about being surrounded by attractive women? Foreshadowing? Uh, Stephen, we had two things really back to back. We had sort of a uh, just a uh, Philip doing like uh, some crowd work. I don't know what he was doing there. Philip for three minutes talking about uh, his what his workout routine is like, and then Cochran talking about uh, doing a Survivor promo during Survivor. Um, can we talk about how at some point Cochran said, "Why does nobody else wear hats like this?" When like. Surely those hats are worn like across the world in like Asian countries, like rice paddy workers. It's like the most like definitive work like hat of people who have to work in like incredibly hot conditions outdoors all the time. Um, anyway, that got that bothered me as a man of the world. Yeah. What about the guys who are twice as tall as Philip? <laughs> don't you don't you think these twelve foot tall uh, people yeah. like Jim are going to be pretty pissed that Philip trashed them on? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they. I mean, for him to be dunking on those guys, you know, or doing the Larry Bird, I guess, uh, whatever the, you know, long shots. I don't he's know. I don't school. know sports, Rob. He's old school. <laughs> yeah. 
So, <laughs> and did you feel like Cochran was pandering to the uh, talking about the date and time and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you know every eight p every eight p.m. on Wednesday I like to sit yeah. down. CBS. What uh, about Central Time? You know, what, what about those guys? You know, Russell, Russell, and Shannon are going to be pissed. Yeah, and the only thing I like more than that is sitting down for a brand new episode of Criminal Minds coming up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's smart. Okay, uh, and let me ask one one last question here on a live Survivor Know It Alls from Carlos. He says, "What do you think of Malcolm finding his idol, and do you think Corinne can benefit from the idol?" It's a good question. If uh, if if uh, the S does go down next week, uh, is there any hope for Corinne considering Malcolm's idol? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, seriously, though, like, why wasn't Corinne looking for the idol, too? You know, she was, like, following Malcolm around. Well, and, 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 like, just put your hand in sometimes, you know? Like, try to grab the idol yourself. Uh, oh, you're talking about the idol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you're talking about their date. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so I uh, on the podcast this week, Stephen, I have a great guest uh, to talk about just this. I'm going to be talking with the uh, most recent winner of Survivor, Denise Stapley. She's going to uh -huh. be And uh, if there's anybody that knows what it's like to find and share an idol with Malcolm, it is Denise. And I'll talk That's to her great. and ask her about uh, what she's thinking. I was so sure you were going to have Susie Smith to talk about what it's like to target Corinne. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. No, Susie, no, Susie Smith yet on the podcast. Maybe, maybe one day. Uh, and I think uh, any, anything else on the episode, Stephen? Great episode, and always great to do some uh, know it alls with you, Rob. And next week we're back at our regular time, nine fifteen p.m. Eastern. Yes. And Stephen, so one week ago tonight we announced our reality game masters Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, we are uh, closing in on about eighty percent of our goal in one week which is uh, truly amazing. So thanks to everybody out there uh, who, is, uh, who has supported us uh, so far. Still three weeks to go in our fundraising for Reality Game Masters. And a lot of people said it couldn't be done, said it wouldn't happen. But uh, we're 80% of the way there. Um, yeah, it's pretty incredible how fast you – you should ask for more money, Rob. You know, we could have all made a, made a mint off of this. Yeah. Well, no, it's Stephen, please, nobody's making any money. That's what I'm saying. Nobody's making any money, you know, like <laughs> – <laughs> That's Even right. more so than, than these podcasts. No, 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 really, nobody's making any money. Yeah. Uh, so, Steve and I will announce, though, uh, I'm going to throw out another name out of the hat. Okay, Stephen? Oh, yeah. The, uh, the official player number two that we're announcing will announce a Big Brother player uh, that he is a, uh, a great game player, a master strategist, and a diabolical super genius. Uh, oh, wow. Welcome, Matt Hoffman. To Woo! Uh, invite list. So Matt Hoffman will be playing uh, against you on Reality Game Masters. Are you scared? Against me or with me as Maybe. my pawn? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited for the world to see, you know, me dominate Matt Hoffman and four other mystery guests. Four other mystery guests. All right. Great. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that is going to do it for uh, Survivor Know It Alls. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Get some rest, buddy. Okay. And then. It's uh, later here. And check out Steven's article on people.com where he'll be giving out a fishy, fishy to someone. All right. I'll see you later, Rob. Have a good night. All right. Take care, Steven. Bye. Bye. All right. And for everybody else, tomorrow uh, I am going to be speaking with the latest person kicked off of Survivor, Hope. Uh, I will have a uh, talk to her about everything we talked about here tonight, what was going on with Shamar, what was going on with the Cool Kids Alliance. Is there any hope for a long-term relationship with Eddie and all that stuff and what was going on in the fans. So we're going to talk to Hope. And then, as I just said a little while ago, Denise, we're going to talk to her about uh, everything that went down with Survivor Philippines, what her take is on Malcolm this season, is he in a good spot, and uh, what her expert Survivor winner eye is telling her about all this. And then uh, come this weekend, we're going to talk about some Big Brother Canada. I actually watched the premiere of Big Brother Canada, and I have to say I liked it. I thought of Big Brother Canada was uh was pretty good so uh we're gonna talk about that over the weekend and then don't forget yes it's happening celebrity apprentice is back as well so we're adding a lot of stuff to the schedule right now uh amazing race podcast is going to be on sunday night and then on monday night i will be talking about celebrity apprentice as well so lots of stuff going on in the reality tv world it's an official perfect storm of reality tv 
And so uh, with the Big Brother Canada, I think what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'll explain more about this uh, as we go along here, I think I'm going to put one, w the first Big Brother Canada podcast in the regular podcast feed, and then I think I'm going to shift Big Brother Canada into its own podcast feed, because I have a feeling most of our listeners are not going to be following the Big Brother Canada as closely as I am. Even though a lot of people are going to follow it, it's going to be good. Okay? So... And then uh, the only thing I want to tell you guys is uh, it's, it's time for Rob Gives Back for all your support that you guys have given me uh, shopping at Amazon over the last year. It's, uh, I want to help out Jillian Larson and support the, uh, Michelle's place in the Reality Rally from March 1st to March 7th. When you shop using the link robasawebsite.com slash Amazon, I will give 100% of the Amazon revenue that comes in to uh, Michelle's place uh, for the Reality Rally. And uh, that is going to be from March 1st through March 7th when you shop at the link. So that starts Friday, Friday to Thursday, when you shop using the link robswebsitecom slash Amazon. So that's going to do it for me tonight. Have a great uh, Thursday, everybody. We'll talk to you in our exit interview. And uh, thank you, Jessica Frey, for pulling these questions. And take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye. Fishy, fishy.